It's time to make an easy fabric strip rug. Look at all the beautiful examples of fabric strips sewn together to make something very useful for your house. You can make these with any type of fabric strip sets. For instance, we're going to demo one that's made from one of these strips. They're laid out next to each other. What beautiful colors. You can also make them from batik sets. Look at how gorgeous and earthy those batiks are. Or maybe pick your favorite color. Mine's green. Make an entirely green rug. You can also use some of the classic strip sets. These come in very bright red colors. This one was done. We even have strip sets that are available in Christmas colorations or Halloween colorations. This quilt was done making, this rug was done using this uh, strip set up above. And this beautiful red, white, and black was done using this strip set. First thing we want to go over is what you need to make an easy fabric strip rug. Here's a pattern by Peace and Applique, and it's available on www.peaceandapplique.com. We'll put that at the end of the recording as well. This easy fabric strip rug, the directions are all you need to be able to do the rug. You also need some batting. You can, of course, cut up your batting uh, that is excess after you've done a quilt, but if you want to, you can buy categories in on a roll batting. It's two and a quarter inches by 50 yards. You only need one roll to do the entire quilt. Again, two and a quarter inches by 50 yards. You'll also need a large spool of thread. You could use Aurifil in any bright, fun color, or you could use a large spool of Mettler. For the needles, we like to use a jean or denim needle. Jean and denim needles are a little stronger than other needles. My preferred size is a 90-14. You will also, you might want to use a set of gloves. These are Gripic gloves, and as you're working around the quilt rug, you may want some extra grippiness to your hands, so you can use your uh, machine quilter's gloves to do that. You may also want to do some best press. After your rug is done, some people lightly spray the rug with best press and then iron it. And finally, you're going to need 44 pieces of two and a half inch fabric strips. In this case, we're going to use a line by Fandangle, which is Krista Watson of Kristen Quilts, and it's made by Benertex. We're going to use 44 two and a half inch strips to make our quilt. Anything between 40 and 44 strips should work for your quilt. Okay, to start with, first thing we need to do is arrange the strips. We like to start with the lightest strips in the center and then work our way out to darker strips. We use the dark strips on the outer edge because that's going to be the most susceptible to dirt or getting dirty, so we try to use a dark strip out there and have the lighter strips toward the center. The other thing we like to do is find a pattern that has two uh, pieces in it. So in this case, these two strips will be the outer edge of the quilt. And if you have two strips, it'll make it all the way around the outside of the quilt. So starting with the strip that you want for the centermost, you take that strip and put it on your um, cutting board. Using your rotary cutter, you need to cut a 16 inch piece from both sides of that strip. So here, I'm just cutting off the remainder of 16 inches. Here's my original strip. Now we're gonna start this using a very simple method. We put a piece of 16 inch batting down on the table. Then we take one of the strips that we cut and we put it right sides up. And then we take the second one that we cut and we put it right sides down. Then if you go into the pattern, 
you're going to find an oval shape. You'll need to either copy it or Xerox it so that oval shape um, is doubled up with arches on each end. You can set that onto your fabric and then pin through it very lightly. We're just going to use that as a guide. So I'm going to pin through this oval. This is going to be the start of our... If you don't want a pin, you can just lay this on your fabric and trace around it with a pen and then just pin the pieces together. Now it's time to go to the sewing machine. So we need to sew all the way around this oval pattern. So I'm going to take this piece and put it into the machine and then use um, using my beautiful Bernina 748. I'll go just off the side of the paper. And when I get down to the end, I'll go a little slower and go around that corner, okay. making a nice arch. And then go down the other side. You can go high speed when you hit that long straight curve on slow down when you get to the end and go around the curve. Again, all you're trying to do is make a nice gentle curve for the center of your piece. Now when you start down the next side, be sure to leave a gap for turning. So we started right here. We're going to want to leave a gap to about there. There's our gap. Now unpin the pattern and use your pattern can be used time and time again. And use your scissors to trim the excess, especially around the curves. It won't matter on the straightaway, but on the curves you want to trim away that excess. This will help when you turn it right sides out. There we go. Now turn the piece inside out. Remember those two right sides together will allow you to just make a nice gentle turn. Use your favorite turning tool or your scissors to make it go nicely all the way out. What you're making is a sandwich oval for the very center of your quilt. And that's going to make it a lot easier to apply your fabric strips to it. So there's one side. And here comes the other. Once you get that all the way out, I go ahead and lightly iron under the seam that I turned it out through. So here, that's a nice gentle curve as well. Now I'll grab my iron and iron this under so that it holds. Okay, so I've turned that right side out and I just wanna go in there and trim back a little of that excess batting with my scissors. Oh, what does that mean? Just oh, like this. I live down the street. Okay. So, Just like that. And then I take an iron and I press this under and this on top of it just so that I have a nice place that I can sew around the outer edge. So here I'm just pressing with my regular iron. We have a shop going on. 
So there I've pressed this out. Now I'm going to add a little bit of decorative stitching with the thread that I chose to do this uh, rug in. So in order to close the open seam, I'm going to stitch along at a quarter inch. Just put that under. I've laced this up with a beautiful blue thread. Now I just put that down and I stitch a scant quarter inch from the edge. That closes the hole and gives a nice decorative edge. Take that gentle curve all the way around. And start down the other side. Again, we're making an oval for the center of our rug. So our objective here is to make a padded oval center. By the way, I do have differential feet on, and I can lighten up the presser, pressure a little for uh, this activity because I've got a lot of layers of fabric under there. So I'll lighten that up just a little. And then just go around, swoop around the end. Makes it look like a nice set of piece. Now we're going to do a couple more lines of stitching. And this is to make this centerpiece look like it was made from a regular stitch strip. So I'm going to start and go straight down the middle with a straight stitch. I'm using the outer parts of the foot to guide it straight down the middle. It doesn't have to be too precise. I'm just going straight down the middle of that strip with a straight stitch. Once I get to the end, I move over right into the middle of the place I've just stitched, and I now I'm going to go down the center with a zigzag stitch. That's going to make it look like I had zigzagged this together. When I do that zigzag, I'm going to increase my stitch width to about 4.8, and I'm going to increase my stitch length to about 2.5. You don't need to have a stitch that's right next to each other. A big, bold stitch is often very nice. So there I am. I, I just redid it. I'm at 4.5 and 2.5. Again, I'm putting a zigzag down one side of the solid stitch. When I get to the end, I just quickly click back to the um, straight stitch and I walk myself right on over to the other side. When I get there, guess what? I hit that straight stitch or that zigzag. It's still on four and a half and two and a half and I go right down the other side. You may want to back up and set your stitches just to make sure they're done. Press your cutter button and you're ready to go. This now is the center of your rug and instead of having to turn back on itself, you'll be able to gently go all the way around the rug without any issue. Okay, the next thing you need to do is um, use the balance of your fabric strips to make um, the fabric into a very long piece. So what we're going to do is take our fabric strips 
put them right sides together and just like you do with a jelly with a um, a strip rug or with binding you start at one side and you sew diagonally on straight across to the, to the other side so we're going to make what in effect is one really really long binding strip by sewing all of these strips on the diagonal crossing over as if they were binding so In order to keep this manageable, I'm only going to do two or three before I stop. I'm going to show you how to make this uh, rug a step at a time, which really makes it manageable uh, and controllable. So that's enough for right now. I'm going to take the rest of my strips and just leave them huh, on the back of my chair. Now that I've got that done, Clip your strips apart. Again, I, I did one, two, three strips was all. And the balance of the first one that I had cut off. Cut your strips apart, and I do take the time to press these open. Because the rug's just going to lay a little bit flatter if you've got all these pressed open. So I press that open. I actually press out the little seam that's, or the fold that's in the middle. Press this open. Press out the fold. Oh, what a nice iron. And then press this one open. You'll notice that I left the salvage edge in there. If it's white and going to protrude beyond, I just take my scissors at this point or a rotary cutter and clip that off. Finally press that open. So now I have two or three strips that I've put together like a binding on the diagonal. Okay. So now it's time to make the start of the rug. And I've got a really fun way to do that that will work very nicely to begin um, a soft edge. So take your roll of batting. Here's our Catahoun on a roll, two and a quarter by 50 yard binding. And find the end of it. What you need to do is, using a ruler, this is about a 10 inch piece here, I cut from one edge down to the point. So I've laid this on my board. There we're at the 10 inch mark, here we're at the zero. I'm gonna lay the ruler across that. Do you see how I'm making a nice fine taper? With my rotary cutter. Save that piece because I actually will use that later. So I've cut from the zero to 10 inches, just picking the corner here and cutting down to the point there. Now take the end of your piece that you need to start on. We're going to flip this over to the pressing side. And put your strip right side down. And then put this on top of it just about centered on there. See how that's laying across there? Now we need to trim off the excess from here. So here's how we do it. We're going to fold this over all the way down to the point, and we're going to give it a press. Fold it over all the way down to the point, And give it a press. That's going to give us a great edge. Now flip it over and just use your rotor cutter 
to cut off the excess. There it goes. That's all that's excess. Now flip your mat back over again because this is when one of those fluffy mats is really nice to use. Okay, now open that up and I'm going to show you how to make the tapered edge. You only need to do this once, so don't worry, it's not that hard. The first thing you do is from the bottom, fold up a quarter inch all the way along the flat side. Boy, there's some steam in there. So you're folding up a quarter of an inch. Then fold the top down, but make sure that the raw edge does not go all the way to the outside edge. You're just folding it down so it's just inside the other folded edge. Just like that. Get that point as trim as you can make it. Now we're going to start folding. And what I do is I fold from the bottom up and I use a pin to hold it on one of these boards. From the bottom up, pin it to the board. From the bottom up, you're putting the two folded edges together. Pin it. From the bottom up. Pin it. From the bottom up. Pin it. So you do that along the first 10 inches of length. We're just folding this up, folding it to the center, put those two folds together, and pin it. This is going to get you started down your rug really nicely without having to um, struggle with how to get these pieces together. You're just folding straight into the middle once you get out to this edge and pinning it into your board. The reason these boards are nice to use is because then if you want to, you could come back along here, and yep, I've got steam going, and I'm pressing this out so that the start of my rug has a nice piece to start with. Okay, now we're back over to the sewing machine again. In general, I take my batting and I put it on the floor. I just want to make sure it's not in the way. Take your pins out of the board. Okay, now that you've got your cording ironed uh, to the center, we're going to stitch straight down the middle of the strip. But this is so tiny that um, you may not be able to hit your feed dogs. So what I did was I moved my needle all the way over to the left. I'm putting down my presser foot, and now I can stitch through the center of the strip. Again, my needle is all the way to the left because this is so skinny it might not even hit your feed dogs. Um, all I'm doing is eyeing, keeping, trying to make a row of straight stitches go straight down the center of the cording that you're creating. I do leave my machine in needle down and I'm on about a 2.45 stitch length. As I come to the part that's not ironed, this is how I do it. I take the fabric strip on the back and I gently lay the batting onto the top of it, wrong sides together, and then I fold the two pieces inward to almost touch, and I fold it in again. I then run my finger through the center so that it all lines up. And then I take about six inches of stitching. Stop with it needle down, open it up, make sure that my fabric and batting are aligned. My batting should be in the middle of the fabric. I fold the two together and fold it again. I've got about six inches. And I run my finger through there to make it all go flat. Turn it over and sew down the middle. Sew about six to eight inches. Again, open it up, lay the batting in the middle of the fabric strip, fold the two edges to the inside, fold it in half, and then run your finger down the middle to make that folded edge go all the way to the back. And then sew about six to eight inches. 
I continue doing this um, for a couple of feet. Arrange it each about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Fold it together and then run your finger down that edge to fold it all to the center. Now that you've got it started, by the way, you can move your needle back to the center position. But I'm going to take it out for a minute and show you how to attach it to the center. Now that you've sewn down the middle of the fabric cord, I take the end and just clip it on a diagonal just to make it a gentle start. And then our job is to attach this cord to the center oval. Remember that the two folds need to be toward the middle and the single fold needs to be toward the outside. So I go back to zigzag and I start toward the end. And I am gently pushing this cord toward the center. Gently push it. You don't have to be um, too uh, forceful about it because the zigzag is what actually holds this together. So just gently push this cord toward the oval and zigzag at about a four and a half by a five and a half. Zigzagging away. When you get to the end, you need to lightly round the corner. Again, gently push this toward the oval, but turn the oval, not the cording. You want this to lay as flat as possible. So again, you don't want to have too much of the cording going toward it. You want to, the oval to be the one that turns. The cord will follow along. Gently push the cord toward the oval and be sure that you're turning the oval. The cord just continues to lay flat. So here we are. Now you can just stitch down until you get to the end of where you've done your single stitching. I stop a little bit before I'm to the end. And now I go back to making cord. So I'm going to cut it at that point. And I'm going to go back to making the cord. I actually like to alternate between the two because you never get so much that it gets confusing. I'm going back to making cord. So I go needle down. I stop. I make sure the batting is right in the center of the fabric strip. I fold it to the inside and I fold it again. I take my finger and run it through there to flatten it out. And then I relax and make the cording. Don't pull too tight on this cording. It'll make it bunch up. So I saw it all the way up to my finger. I've sewn about six inches. I stop. I put the batting in the middle of the strip. Fold it to the inside, fold it again, run your finger through the middle, and now stop putting too much pressure on that. Just very lightly let it go through the machine. Don't pull this really hard. You're just going to um, make it skinny and put too much pressure on it. And so all the way up to that six inches. Back up, put the batting in the center, fold it in and then swipe your, your fingers through there so that it all lays flat. Now relax. Let the cording go through the machine to the point where you fold it up. That's it. We're going to continue doing this for a really long time. Um, I'm going to alternate between doing this cording. I'll do one more set. Fold it to the center, swipe your fingers through it, and then relax. Don't pull it too tight as it's going through the machine. 
I'm sewing straight down the middle. And when it's done with that round, I'm gonna cut it. And now let's go back to our rug piece. Flip over to zigzag, two and a half by four and a half. And start back a little on the zigzag so it's got a couple of stitches that it takes um, over as well. Let's go back to zigzagging. Lightly going back and forth between the two pieces. And then it's easy to do this on the straightaway. You can gain a little more speed. But when you get to the end, remember, you're turning the oval. You're not turning the cord. You're just lightly putting the cord next to it. This is so that it doesn't roll up on you. Just turn the oval, don't turn the cord. The cord lightly goes next to it. That's going to make this whole thing lay flat. Here we are going around the head of it. And I didn't quite catch that, so I'm going to back up just a little bit. Let's back up just to there. And make sure that you catch it because that's going to help with the integrity of your rug. Now when we come to this point where we started, I'm just going to slip those two, that little end, right into the um, fold of the new cord. So I just slip those together, gently press them together, and off I go. Now I'm on my second round. And again, I'm being very light about this, just barely pressing it toward the center. And look, I'm just about back to the point where I need to go and make some more cording. Cut it there, and now I'm going to go make some more cord. The only thing you'll have to know is when you get to the end of this strip, I'll go ahead and add a strip from behind me to the end of the jelly roll, once again, forming that diagonal um, seam, and then just continue on. I do two or three strips at a time. So I'm doing two or three of these diagonal seams, and then I'm sewing into, into a cord that lasts two or three feet, and then I zigzag the cord onto the flat um, rug. Come back later as I'm getting toward the end, and I'll show you how to end the rug.
Hi, good morning. We're back in sewing on our easy fabric strip rug. Uh, you may notice that the color of the table has changed, as well as the quilt that's in the background. Um, we've moved now to the North Shop. I sewed on the rug for about an hour and a half um, yesterday, and now I'm going to complete it while I'm sitting here. I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, when I came up here, I'll tell you that I noticed I was sewing the cording with the two folds to the right. When I sat down this morning, I started sewing and immediately put the two folds to the left. You'll see that it's much more comfortable for me to hold the fabric in my dominant hand, which is right, and then fold it in half and half again, and then use my left finger to sweep through and make it flat. Then relax and sew through. Sew all the way up to your finger, so you're getting a full six to eight inches each time. So I put the batting in the center, I fold it to both sides to the center, fold it in half with the double edges being on the left. I put it back in my right hand and swoop through with my left hand. I'll tell you yesterday or last night when I was doing it, swooping with my right hand was really difficult because I like my right hand to be holding the piece. So you can back up and see the effect of that on the video. I just, it wasn't as natural of a motion for me. The other thing I want to show you is over here on my um, table. If you put the roll down on the floor and it off spools, this is going to become twisted as it goes along. So last night, I put this roll onto the knee lever on my machine. Today, I put it into the cabinet. And as I need a little bit, I just pull it forward. That keeps the, the batting from getting twisted around and you having to stop and untwist the whole thing. So again, last night I used the knee lever. Today, I'm using a drawer on the side of my machine. Okay, back to sewing the fabric cord. So as we talked about the last time, I'm sewing straight down the middle. Uh, I'm sewing with about a two and a half inch stitch, stitch width. I've got all my strips already joined in a binding diagonal to make a long strip. That is sitting underneath uh, my sewing machine and now I turn both of these to the to the middle and then turn uh, them both on their side when I'm ready to start sewing I relax my hand and take the tension off of it so that I'm not pulling it and then I just let the sewing machine feed it all the way in I'm going to do it one more time and then we're going to go back to zigzagging fold both to the center Again, because this is a two and a quarter inch binding or batting, there's plenty of room to fold this to the center and not have it get bunched up and then fold it in half again. Hold it in my right hand and use my left hand. Again, you can't imagine how uh, different that is because I'm not trying to smooth it out with my right hand. And then sew up to where your fingers are and stop. I'm going to cut that and we're going to go back to zigzagging for a moment. This is going to let go. Right now I'm using uh, a Bernina 830 to do my sewing. What a lovely machine. I do have the differential feed on. If you have feed dogs, now would be a great time to use them because feed dogs will help it manually um, go through the machine a lot nicer. I'm going to go to my zigzag stitch. It's at four and a half wide by two and a half long. And I am going to back up just a little bit to make sure those stitches are secure. Let's talk again about what you move. This hand is very light. We just want to push it toward the rug. This hand is the one that works. As you're moving, move the rug around with your left hand. My right hand is only here to keep the cord close to the original rug. If you pull on this too hard, let me show you what will happen. When you pull too hard, the edge comes up and you start to form a bowl. If you leave it nice and loose, your quilt, your rug will be flat when you're done. 
So here we are just stitching along. Take more time when you're on the corners on the ends than when you're on the straightaway. Because the straightaway, you're just zigzagging the two down. Nothing's moving. I actually am using a number 1D foot and I have a center mark there and I'm trying to run that center mark right down the middle of these two pieces. That's how I'm lining up my zigzag. Again, on the straight part, you can go a little faster. It won't hurt it at all. When you get down to the curved part, we're just trying to make this as flat as possible. So, turn the piece with your left hand, continue to only snug it up lightly with your right hand, and take your time when you're going around the curve. Line up the dash that's on your foot with the space between the two pieces. Again, just take that curve gently. By the way, you'll see that, that Maddie chose a turquoise blue color for the um, red. It's one of the colors in this great big rug, but you see here uh, on the early part of the rug, it's serving as a contrast color. I think when you take the time to do all this sewing, that you should so show off your work by doing a contrasting thread. Then everyone can see kind of what you've been working for. If you want it to blend in, you could pick a more neutral tone um, or pick a smaller thread. You could pick a 60 or 80 thread weight uh, and the thread would blend in more and you'd see more of the fabric. Because this is a more contemporary look, we wanted to have a contrasting thread being used. And it's going to look beautiful when we get out to the blues that are on, at the end of this book. Again, there are other ways you could do this quilt, but I like to do a little bit of the cording stitching and then go back and zigzag it on. Then I go back and do a little more cording and I zigzag it on. Right now I'm turning the rug with my left hand very gently and I'm just easily putting the strip on with my right hand. Any of those starts and stops that I have, I'll go back and trim those um, tails later when I'm done. So here I am making my big turn. Everything is laying in just beautifully. And it's nice and flat. Um, some people have had difficulty with uh, creating a bowl. Again, if you use that oval piece to start out, your quilt will start out flat and then your rug will be flat in the end. So here I am just a stitching along. I make um, a yard or two of cording and then I zigzag it on. Then I go back and make another yard or two of cording and I zigzag it on.
So look what we've done uh, to complete the rug. You'll see that all of the fabric cording has been put onto the rug down to the last about a foot and a half. You'll also see that this rug has never been touched by an iron, but it's already laying almost flat. At the very end, I am going to take and put a little bit of best press on it and flatten out the edges. But this rug, as it was built, is laying flat on the table. That's what's great about the pattern. So, we are at the last foot and a half of our rug. What I did was, I cut the batting to be the same size as the fabric strip. I'm going to take just the batting and do the same thing that I did on the very first piece. I'm going to lay my ruler across from 10 inches down to 1 inch, and I'm going to make a diagonal out of the piece. If you want to, you can use this piece from the start and just add it to the end there, whichever way you'd like to do it. I just want to make it simple for this demo so you see how it's done. Once I cut that, I'm going to iron the um, part of the fabric strip so that it matches it. So here I'm going to start right there. And you know what, I'm going to put a couple pins in here to hold it so that I'm not struggling uh, with the ironing. And remember, I'm going to take this, turn it down, press it just a little. That tells me exactly where my quarter inch seam is. And then when I flip it up, I can uh, cut it off again on that line, or I can just flip it over and cut off the excess here. So I cut off that little bit of excess, just like I did on the very first one. Back to the ironing pad. As you recall on the last one, in order to make these two go together, I folded up the remaining edge just shy of um, the folded edge on the other side. So I'm folding this up. Easiest to press in that quarter inch seam first. So I'm going to press in the quarter inch seam that covers this. There we go. See how that presses nicely up there? It's a little bit less than a quarter inch. Press that up. Hit that with an iron again to make sure that that's down. And now I just join those two folded edges together and put a pin in there on this fabric board. Join the two folded edges together and put a pin in there. Back here, I'm going to do the same thing. Just fold the two folded edges together and press a pin into there. There we go. As we get to the fattest part, I go back and I fold the two edges together, fold it in half, and again put my favorite pins in there. This is going to hold it so I can give it a really, really good press. Fold those two edges together and give it a pin. Just one more. Fold those two edges together and give it a pin. All right, so this is in the shape that I want it to be in. This is a nice tapered edge. Now I take my iron and give it a really good press. It's just going to be so much easier to work with when I get over to my sewing machine if I press that out really nicely. I'm not going to have to struggle to get it all lined up. All right, so there's a nice folded edge. Take out all your pins, don't want to drop any. And let's go back to the sewing machine. So now we put the fabric strip back into the sewing machine. I use my needle down, as I've been doing all along, and I sew straight down the middle of the cording. I can stop as I go along, make sure that this is accurate. Again, I like that the two folds are to the left. It really makes it a lot easier. Fold it down. Now I'm getting into the part that I already have ironed. 
so it's very easy to sew that cording. Just making sure that all the raw edges line up nicely. Almost at the end here, we've just about started our taper. Here it is coming down. I will tell you, I kind of hang to the left on this part just to make sure that I've got all the finished edges. Bought. I'm just folding that over. Look at those pretty little folded edges. Ready to go right to the end of it. As I did the last time, I am going to take a scissors and cut a diagonal onto that piece. Just from where I went off on sewing, I'm cutting off the salvage edge and that little bit of a diagonal. Now I'm going to pop back to my um, zigzag stitch and under the needle it goes again. Oh, this is such a nice time. You have a couple of feet left to zigzag the balance of your rug together. Wouldn't it be funny if I ran out of thread right now? When I get down to the end, I do decrease the stitch length a little because this is the end of the rug. And it might actually take a little more traffic than the beginning of the rug. So I've decreased my stitch length to like two. I'm still at a four and a half uh, width. So here I am, a little bit thinner stitch. Right down to the end of the rug. That's it. Look at that beautiful rug. And because you started with an oval, everything is already flat. Again, I'm gonna take a little bit of water or a little bit of breast press, um, put some water on the rug, and then put steam on it, flatten it out just a little bit more. But that rug is already flat and ready to go. Um, again, Fandangle was the fabric line used on this. And um, the pattern is available on Peace and Applique, P-E-A-C-E, and applique.com. It's on the front uh, page of our website and it's a digital download so you don't have to wait for it to come in the mail. You can get the pattern and use it immediately. Thanks so much for watching our easy fabric strip rug. Hope to bring another one to you soon.